Hello and welcome to another edition of Conspirator Brock's Pull List. This is my pull list for the week of June 21st, 2017. Uh, let's get right into it because it's a ginormous week this week. So, uh, yeah, be prepared for that. Uh, first up we have All-Star Batman number 11, uh, continuing the first Ally story arc. Um, I've really been enjoying uh, Scott Snyder's run on All-Star Batman so far. Uh, despite the first arc being John Romita Jr. artwork, um... It's still in a really, really solid book. Next up, we have the 25th issue of Aquaman. Um, this is Underworld Part 1. Um, these are extra... These t This issue is a 25, and there's going to be a few more 25 issues in here. Um, they're extra-sized anniversary issues. Uh, they are $3.99, uh, but this is only for uh, the issue 25s. Um, but it's almost double-sized, so it's actually a really good value. Uh, kudos to to DC for um, just upping it a little bit, giving you way more content. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm a little bit behind on Aquaman. Um, like most of my books, uh, I'm probably getting close to a short box of being behind, so I need to catch up as soon as possible. But uh, fingers crossed I can do that. Uh, next up is a big title, uh, Batman number 25. Uh, the War of Jokes and Riddles Part 1 starts here. Um, Diamond Comics is this book issue. This book is back ordered or not in stock. So if you see it tomorrow and you're curious, you need definitely need to pick it up because shops won't necessarily be able to order extra copies of it, uh, and you might get stuck getting second prints if it does go to a second print. So be aware of that. Next up, we have Batwoman number four. Um, Batwoman's been okay. Um, I haven't. I, I don't know where I stand with it right now. Um, the three issues in, and I'm kind of just eh, so we'll see if it continues to stay on my pull list. Next up, we have Britannia, We Who Are About to Die, number three. Um, yeah, the first series was really good. I'm enjoying the second series, so I'm going to keep going with that. Next up is DC Comics Bombshells, number 29. Uh, this collects issues 85 through 87 of the digital um, first um, chapters, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm hoping this book comes to an end soon so I can stop collecting it, because it's really not that great, <laughs> I don't, I'm a sucker, I just keep getting it, most likely I'll get it, and then just sell the whole thing, uh, next up we have a Green Arrow 25, another one of these extra sized issues, uh, story arc going on is Broken Arrow, I'm definitely really behind on Green Arrow, uh, not just because I haven't been able to read it, but also because it was delayed, um, or we got shorted copies of an issue a few, uh, a few issues ago, so I'm, a, I'm behind due to shipping error, and also because I just haven't had time to read. Next up we have Green Lanterns number 25, uh, Return of the First Lantern is a story arc that's going on, so we'll see how that pans out. Next up we have Harley Quinn number 22, uh, The Family Circles part 1, um, looks like uh, Harley's parents are coming to town, we'll see how that goes, looks like Dini is still doing a backup story in that, so um, good. I'm, I'm really enjoying that stuff. Next up is Justice League number 23. Uh, Fear itself continues here. Um, some weird new character, the Black Shield. Um, no clue. A little bit behind, so I gotta get caught up. Uh, the Looney Tunes books are still coming out, and this one is Lobo Roadrunner number one. Um, curious to see how this story unfolds. Um, maybe a Roadrunner is hiring Lobo to capture uh, the road. Uh, Wiley Coyotes maybe hired Lobo to capture the Roadrunner, so we'll see. Um, there are two covers on that book. Um, I only opted for that one. Um, so, yeah. Next up is Rucka's The Old Guard, number five. Uh, I've been really enjoying this series so far. Really good stuff uh, from Rucka. Uh, art is amazing on it. I uh, can't wait to dive in and see what else is going on there. Next up is Odyssey of the Amazons, six of six. This finishes this mini-series from DC about... Uh, Amazons before Wonder Woman. Um, I it's been okay. Um, I'm gonna read. I finished issue five uh, last night, so I'm gonna read that as quick as possible, and then I'm most likely just gonna sell my set. Um, yeah. Next up, we have Rapture, Ninja Shadow Man number two of three. Um, at least that's what it says on Comicsology. So we'll see. Um, 
enjoy it so far for the most part. Um, we'll see how that goes. But most of the Valiant stuff is just a good, solid read overall. So I'm always recommending Valiant to people who want to try something out that's not necessarily the big two, but still has kind of a superhero feeling to it. Next up is Royal City number four from Jeff Lemire. Uh, I did not get a chance to read issue three, so I'm about two behind, but issues one and two were really good. So, uh, yeah, I highly recommend if you can find it, uh, pick up those early issues of Royal City, and check it out. Next up is Super Sons number five, Battle in the Bat Cave is the story arc going on now. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's, Super Sons is okay. Um, I like it for the most part. Tomasi does a really good job. Um, he's done a really good job with the father-son dynamic. I'm not necessarily sold on the son and son dynamic. So, um, yeah, we'll see if, if I continue to get Super Sons. But, I mean, it's okay. Next up is Superman 25. Um, Black Dawn continues here. Um, I'm really curious to see what's happening in this book because I'm behind and I've been enjoying Superman. So, who knows? Uh, next up, we have Teen Titans Go, number 22. Uh, again, I get it because my kids like Teen Titans Go, but we don't read it together. I read it, so it, I'll probably give it to them at some point. Or I'll hold on to it until it, it matures, and I'll still give it to them. Next up, we have Trinity, number 10. Um, a Dead Space is the story just going on right now. Uh, Mana Pool's work on this has been okay. Uh, I've been enjoying it for the most part. So we'll see where it goes. Sorry for the dings. My phone is going off um, for some odd reason. Uh, next up we have The Wild Storm number 5. Uh, been enjoying it so far. The Warren Ellis stuff has been pretty good. I'm curious to see where it goes. Um, but overall, I like it. Next up is in the other Looney Tunes this week, and it's Wonder Woman, uh, Tasmanian Devil. Yes, it's Jim Lee art. Yes, that Wonder Woman looks amazing. Yes, that Tasmanian Devil looks weirder than shit. Um, so, yeah, curious to see how that one pans out, but, uh, hopefully it's a fun read. So, that's it for my pull list. Um, I did grab some variants this week. Um, I'm trimming down on the variants, uh, even though I'm going to be adding the Batman ones, because they look awesome coming, going forward. Um, but I picked up the variant for Aquaman at number 25. Uh, I also picked up the Green Lanterns 25 variant, um, Frank Cho, of course, does the Harley variant for 22, so I had to snag that one up. Uh, Superman 25 had a cool variant cover, so I decided to get that one. Uh, oh, these are out of order. Super Sons should have been beforehand, um, but uh, yeah, I got the one for Super Sons because it's Dustin Nguyen art. Awesome stuff. Uh, Jim Lee, another Jim Lee art in Wildstorm number 5. Um, I'm not particularly sold on this. It kind of looks a little weird for his art style, um, but hey can't all be winner, winning covers. Uh, and then there was a second print that came out this week, um, for those of you that missed it, uh, and that's for Batman 24, every epilogue is a prologue, and yes, what it says on the cover completely spoils it, and if you haven't been spoiled already, well, you've been spoiled now. Uh, so the only difference is really is that this is the same, it's just they added this. So yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I did pick up a couple graphic novels. The first one is the original graphic novel, DC Superhero Girls Summer Olympus. Um, I've been getting these Superhero Girl stuff uh, for me and my daughter to read, even though we haven't had a chance to. Um, I still think they're fun and are really engaging. My nieces like them, um, so I'll probably be grabbing a copy for my nieces. And the other big book that came out for me was the Justice League vs. Suicide Squad hardcover. Um, yep, so it's a nice collection of that story that went through. Uh, I found it funny that on the back there's this huge sticker that says printed and bound in the USA. Um, that's great. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that's all I got for that. <clears throat> so... That's it for my pull list. Uh, again, my pull list is stuff that I bring home for my collection. Uh, now we're going to move on to the read list. These are titles that I read to stay current and caught up as on much more books than I actually bring home. Uh, so first we have Steve Rogers, Captain America, number 18, uh, where we have a tie-in with what's going on in Secret Empire. Uh, Neymar is apparently back. Yeah, I don't know how he came back. I didn't read into that, and I still don't know. Whatever. Because apparently he was dead at some point. Who knows? 
Uh, next up is a new number one from Image, and that's Crosswind, uh, number one, written by Gail Simone. Uh, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Uh, I think I read a preview in a in somewhere, or I don't know. We'll see. Next up is The Mighty Thor, number 20. Uh, Jason Aaron continues his run on Thor, and I've enjoyed it for the most part overall. Uh, so I'm curious to see where it goes from here. Uh, uh, number one that's coming out from Marvel that they're probably going, ooh, you need to buy, you need to buy, but I'm not too, I'm not sold on it yet. Uh, and that's Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, number one by Chip Zdarsky. Uh, we'll see if this flies. Um, Amazing Spider-Man numbers are eh, they're okay. Um, I think there's just too much saturation in the Spider-Universe at Marvel, and I really think it, it, you can tell that it's affected sales overall. Um, the disinterest that's that's coming out of Marvel, um, at least from the consumer side and the retailer side, uh, is really high, and that's scary. Um, but I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, Next up is Star Wars or Darth Maul number four. I've enjoyed this so far, so I'm going to keep going with it. Uh, it's a nice Darth Maul story, um, so I can't wait for a nice collected edition of it. Um, next up we have Star Wars Darth Vader number two. Um, you now, Charles Soule has done a, did a good job on issue one. I really wish the entire issue was Charles Soule telling us a Darth Vader story, besides us just getting um, part, like basically a first issue with the 299 first issue and or 399 first issue and then getting a backup story about Vader and a mouse droid and all cartoony and stuff and it, it really felt like it was supposed to be an annual and not an issue one so I was a little disappointed in that um, but Marvel racked up the price to 499 and gave you this bullshit story at the end so I really think that Marvel doesn't understand exactly how to reach readers and really grasp them. Um, as, a, as somebody who works in a comic book store, I enjoyed the first issue of Darth Vader, but it's hard to sell it at $5 when you're not getting $5 worth of just Darth Vader, Charles Soul. You're getting Darth Vader, Charles Soul, and a backup. And the backup wasn't just like a couple pages. It was like four or six pages. It was ridiculous. So... Uh, I'm curious to see where the story goes, so I'm reading it. Um, but yeah, Marvel, stop with this shit. It's ridiculous. Um, next up, we have WMD number one, or Weapons of Mutant Destruction. Um, we're barely into the first story arc in Weapon X, and we're already crossing over with Totally Awesome Hulk. Uh, I think it's way too early for a crossover or with another title in so I'm not too sure and yes the wonderful price for this oh I'm sorry it's the alpha for alpha so it's weapons of mass destruction number one alpha I don't know how there'd be an alpha two um, it's four ninety nine so five bucks that's what you get we'll see if it's worth it uh, next up we have X-Men Gold number 6. Uh, I've been enjoying the story so far. It's been really engaging and really interesting. It really does feel like classic X-Men. So, um, yeah. So I'm, lo I'm actually, I look forward to reading X-Men Gold uh, when it comes out. Uh, so that's it for this week's uh, read list. There were a few titles from last week that I was not able to pick up um, due to the um, so few we had on the shelf. But because we hadn't sold through them yet, um, I'm, I grabbed a few. I grabbed them off the shelf to read this week. First up is Grass Kings. I think this is number three. What the hell is it? No, number four. So Grass Kings number four. Uh, really enjoyed so far. So I'm going to go with it. Uh, and then we have Hulk number seven. Um, again, Hulk's just been... I, I think Hulk's been... The only problem really that I have with Hulk is that it's not She-Hulk. It's Hulk. It needs to be titled She-Hulk. It's not just Hulk. Um... But I really enjoy that the book dives into things like post-traumatic stress disorder and, um, you know, being depressed or feeling isolated or these mental disorders that a lot of people um, do suffer from. Um, and so I think it's really great to see characters that are going through things, that are suffering through things, and we get to see how that plays out. And, and because they're a superhero, maybe they'll resonate a little bit more in, with people and hopefully be beneficial to them in helping them deal with their... not deal with, but live... live with. it's always tough to talk about this stuff. Um, but it's nice to see 
them touching on these these topics instead of just, oh, I'm going to beat you up, and oh, you're a bad guy, I'm going to beat you up, or oh, you're a good guy, and we're going to fight. Um, so yeah, so really good stuff uh, coming from Hulk right now. Uh, next up, uh, Planet of the Apes Green Lantern number 5 of 6 is the other one I picked up from last week to read. Uh, I've been enjoying it so far. It's just been a fun, um, you know, uh, publisher crossover event. So, yeah. So that's it for my pull list this week. Uh, again, a ton, a ton of books. This is just a small, uh, this is just a, 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 a decent amount of what's coming out. There's much, much more out there. So, uh, when you get down to your local comic book store, be prepared for a very full wall of titles this week. Um, I had mentioned earlier that um, there was some dis disenchantment or d disinterest in Marvel. Um, the I think the solicitation came out for Marvel Legacy number one, which is supposed to be kind of the uh, DC Rebirth or DC Universe Rebirth uh, special that uh, DC put out, uh, which was an oversized special, and they released it for $2.99 on the first print, um, and uh, that was really great. It was it was a low price point. It really got people engaged. It actually got them uh, curious about things because they, they felt like the interest that they, the, the investment that they put in was, you know, a little, but it gave them so much more, and so they've branched out, and they're starting to read more DC characters because of this kind of introduction to DC Rebirth with the DC Rebirth special. Um, Marvel's Legacy um, special, however, is 64 pages, and it's going to be five ninety nine, six dollars $6 for this thing. It, 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 why? Like, seriously, Marvel, why? I understand you want to make money, but you also need to remember that you need to keep and retain readers to continue making money. Um, it's... And I know people are going to bitch on the comments. Ah, you're a Marvel hater. Blah, blah, blah. But from the, the standpoint of a retailer, you... You see these price points and you see them come across or you know in the solicitations and you're like it's difficult to know how much to order um due to the fact that how much interest is there going to be in a six dollar book that people might not be interested in anything that comes out of it um a lot of people are you know marvel sales are down across the board um due to you know, a lot of thing, a lot of different factors, not just one specific thing like diversity or, um, you know, writing staff or art staff. It's a plethora of things at Marvel that has caused Marvel sales to be as low as they are currently. Um, and it's a sad thing. It's not a healthy thing for the comic book industry. The comic book industry needs Marvel and DC to both be healthy and both be performing very, very well for there to be a successful comic book market. Um, right now, DC Rebirth is, is still doing very well. Um, you know, numbers do go down due to the fact that we're a, a year in and people either just don't, didn't like something and stopped reading it or, you know, so, uh, or just interest has fallen off on a certain character. Whatever the case, it's a natural progression. You have a peak up when it goes to when it has, you have a number one and then you have a drop and it depends on the severity of that drop um you know how disenfranchised people are with the product um something like batman you know you you had high numbers and it didn't necessarily have a drop off with number two because there was interest there now there was most likely a drop off due to the speculator market and all that stuff, um, and of course shops over order number ones to get variants. Um, but DC didn't have tons of variants for their books that weren't unattainable for retailers. Whereas Marvel, um, I think I saw about three covers for Weapons of Mass Destruction Alpha. I saw uh, like at least six covers for. Um, the um, the spectacular Spider-Man book, um, and these you have to order huge numbers just to get these variants. Now the variants sometimes pay for what you paid to get all those books, but if it's not selling or it doesn't sell, you don't get you're not making any 
money off of that. You just have stuff, stuff sitting there taking up space. So with Marvel going five ninety nine for this title is making it is 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 difficult for retailers to gauge how much they should really get and how much they should really invest because this is an investment for them. They have to fork out the money, a higher price point for this to get this book on shelves. Um, whereas something for two ninety nine isn't necessarily that dire of an investment, especially at the lower price point. Now I know Ryan uh, at Comics Conspiracy, um, he is going to offer his subscribers the a copy of uh, that the book for free, and for it will be on sale on the shelf for two ninety nine. Um, he would much rather take a hit than. And, and get people this book to, to see if there's interest to see what hopefully that sparks something where people come back for more rather than dishing out a ton of money and to, to get variants and all that he would much rather get people interested get people in and get people reading at a lower price point um, and uh, Marvel was talking to retailers and, and there seemed to be open lines of communication and, and things were seeming to be different, but it appears that Marvel's gone back to their old ways and they're not listening to the retailers anymore. Um, we got overshipped at Comics Conspiracy at issue four of Guardi all new Guardians of the Galaxy. We have been overshipped issues two, three, and four of this book. We, what are we going to do with this many copies of a book that we don't sell? Like, we ordered what we needed, and they still shipped us more copies than what we needed. I think we ordered 12 copies of All-Star, or of All-New Guardians of the Galaxy, and they shipped us 55. What the fuck are we supposed to do with those 43 extra copies of this book? Like, what are we supposed to do with it? Um, so, I, I think that, you know, a lot of people out there love Marvel. I like Marvel. I've, al I've always read Marvel. I think the business practices of Marvel, uh, you know, seeing it from the other side of the counter, um, and also, you know, just being a reader of the material and enjoying it for a while, but it's they've gotten away from, they've definitely gotten far, far away from where they used to be, um, and I think that it's definitely, it feels like they're trying to find the, the point where they can get away with it as, how much can we get away with? And I don't think that that's a great model to have especially in this industry you want to be putting out a really great and solid product um you know secret empire the 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 is a good example of i was i was you know i was i didn't have any expectations going in i read the free comic day uh Secret Empire, I read the Zero issue, I read the first issue, and all three of those really made me engaged and interested in this story that Nick Spencer was telling about Captain America being Hydra and now taking over the world. Um, but with issue two in the introduction more of the resistance against that, um, you, you know, it was a little, okay, all right, cool, we have the good side and the bad side now, and things are a little difficult to to map out but that's the story issue three and four i think is where the story starts to fall apart for me in the sense that all that they've really figured out is that they need to find each piece of this cosmic cube that got exploded and put enough back together that they can fix everything so unless this book has some really big twist i can see what's going to happen already with issue four and it's supposed to have five more issues I don't care anymore. So, not to mention that half Ultron, half Hank Pym, I don't understand why is this still a thing. So, sorry again for the rant at the end of this video. <laughs> um, you'll most likely leave your comments down below for those of you that want to troll, and that's what you want to do. If I delete it, that's what I want to do. So, um, but yeah, if you if you do have any comments about the issue and want to have a discussion about it you know please leave feel free to leave comments down in the, in the comments section below um you know it's always good to hear what other people are thinking going into these things um not everything is for me and not everything is for another person it's some things are for one person some things are not for another and that's that's the beauty of of writer or you know 
written word and art and all that stuff is is, is so, you know somebody might like one thing but not like the other but because you don't like this and I like this but you don't that doesn't mean we can't have a conversation so uh yeah uh, no, I'm still gonna probably get blasted for being a Marvel hater uh, anyway, uh, thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave your comments down in the uh, comment section below. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Brock Sager. Normally, you can listen to me on the Comics Conspiracy podcast, but um, due to uh, scheduling uh, or some scheduling faux pas, I was not able to be on uh, last week's because we had to reschedule for Monday and I can't record Mondays and this week Ryan was sick and couldn't didn't it was way too tired to record uh, so we should be back next week and I should be on uh, regular Tuesday night so on and so forth so uh, I will leave a link in the description below to uh, the previous episode of the comic conspiracy and you can check that out for yourself or up to the comic conspiracy uh, page on geekbox.net um, so you can check it out for yourself if you want. You can help me and my fellow conspirators out uh, through Patreon at www.patreon.com slash comicsconspiracy. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can help you help us with hosting, you help us with getting some food, you help us with getting some wonderful comics to read and other stuff. We do appreciate all that our Patreon backers do uh, in support of us. Um, we have hit the mark to do random comic picks on the podcast now, so each week we will be uh, picking a random title uh, that we suggest to you, so uh, you can check those out, or you can figure what to, here, you find out what those are by listening to the podcast. Um, and as a Patreon backer, you also get access to Bryce Briefly's, which is Bryce Larson's just rant that is not brief on trying to get through the Marvel wall within a limited time frame and he never succeeds. Um, and you also get asked us to Toby and Charlie's, uh, the roundup podcast, uh, which hopefully they'll record a new one soon. Um, and that's, they go, they talk about, uh, general TV and stuff like that versus all the superhero stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm tired. I've been up since 4:45, Um, and it is now almost like 10, it's like almost 11 o'clock. So I'm, I'm getting pretty beat. Uh, so I'll have to upload this and, and go to bed, but, uh, thanks again for watching. And I will see you next week.